Welcome back to Citizen Debates. Many thanks for keeping it Citizen TV. We are live from a very warm Mandera County, about 31 degrees Celsius. I know you watching us in Nairobi, it's almost 17 there. So it's a pretty warm evening here and a great debate we are having here as we discuss the future of this county with two candidates. We've got Noor Aden here on a UDA ticket. He's vying to be uh, the next governor of this county, together with Aden Mohammed on a Jubilee ticket. Former CS also vying to be the uh, next governor of this particular county. Now, before we took the break, we were discussing matter security. And I want to hear from you now, Aden Mohammed, on this one <coughs> to understand what you feel your main concern is in regards to security in 2022 in Mandera. Is it inter-clan conflict? Is it external threats? Where are you most concerned about and what solution would you place on the table for the people of Mandera? I think both, actually. Uh, on the issue of inter-clan conflict, uh, we need to understand the underlying reasons why communities uh, get into trouble. And Typically, it's because of fights over resources, fight over injustices and unfair distribution of wealth, employment, and many others. And so if you deal with that underlying problem, making sure that if jobs are being created in this county, and most jobs are created by the county government, the distribution of jobs needs to reflect the face and the shape of the people and communities that live here. But really what causes problems are sometimes cross-border conflicts over grazing land, water, and scarce resources. Uh, you tell a Somali that your cows or camels don't have water, and someone else's animals are having water, you are calling for a problem. And so we want to make sure that those underlying problems are dealt with to make sure that those things don't continue to be the cause of the problem. Communities, nobody wants to fight, and, and I think that's the main reason. The, on the other issues, the external threat, I think is something that is within the scope of the national government, as you rightly say. And there's a lot of mystery to it, of course, because there are different layers and intelligence and other authorities that deal with that. Ours is to make sure that we look, collaborate with the national government but also deal with things that we have control over, which is addressing the challenges the young men and women of this county face, which is to give them opportunities, be it on employment front, but also on wealth creation opportunities that I'm sure we'll be able to talk about later. Okay, and we'll come back to that. I still want to tie us to security, but insecurity has a spiral effect on various parts of an economy, whether a county economy or a national economy as well. And coming back to you, Noor Ali, we know that the insecurity in this county, at least in previous days, has affected uh, the education sector and the healthcare sector as well. Actually, the last, uh, some of the statistics we have here is that the TSC had cited a shortage of teachers in the county at 1,849 for, primary, for public primary schools and 517 in secondary schools. We also hear a similar challenge in the healthcare sector as well. How do you intend to address these problems? Uh, uh, very well. I, what you are mentioning is really there. Uh, actually, I've done statistics. I went around when I was campaigning. I've seen the problem. As we said earlier, if, if your hands are not together, you cannot solve anything about security because it's a, I mean, uh, a national function. Uh, what I've noted, actually I talked to a teacher, you've mentioned teachers and it came to my mind, that uh, he told me he is working, he's coming from Kisumu but working here, and he told me he fears to go by road because he can be attacked or can be removed from the bus since he doesn't belong to this community. So the, the only hope that they can reach their home is by, by going through the air, which is costing 40,000, more than even their salary. So you don't expect such teachers to be there. If now you tell me how you're going to solve, I have to motivate the non-locals who are working here. For example, I make sure that every holiday, one, three, three holidays in a year, I give teachers air transport home because they are human beings like me and you. Uh, I make sure that I give them good allowance from the county for a coffer, so that on top of what they're getting from TSC, and the rest will be history. People will feel like coming and working in this place. That is so your proposition? That is, me. that is me. 
Okay. Uh, for you, for you, Aiden Mohammed, we have heard of cases of teachers even boycotting. For example, there was a problem in most secondary schools. Uh, this is data from ISPAC. As teachers handling technical subjects that entail practicals had at some point even boycotted reporting to work due to the insecurity challenges that they faced. I want you to talk to me about that link between insecurity and how it affects those sectors and the very real solutions that you propose to Mandera residents today. The, the issue of education and teacher problems in this county is really one that is a vicious cycle. And somehow that circle has to be penetrated and cut short. Because if you think about it, the students who go to school here tend not to do well because of lack of teachers. And yet, you depend on teachers from other parts of the country who also cannot be here on a long-term basis because of security problem. And so it's a catch-22 situation. And whilst the immediate short-term solution is to provide protection to non-locals who feel exposed whilst teaching in these counties, I think the long-term solution is one of motivating the locals here to go into teaching, teaching profession. I will not throw resources at motivating teachers by paying allowances, because we need that money for a lot of other things. And, and that is just a short-term problem, a solution. I think one way of attracting locals to teaching profession, and by the way, there are many people who want to go into it, but they don't make the cutoff for teacher training grades. And why can they make it? Because they don't have teachers when they do secondary school. So one of the key things we will work on is to work with national governments to consider having an affirmative action of lowering the grade for entry points for teacher training for people who are in this difficult environment. That is the long-term solution that I think requires collaboration between these counties, and it's not only Mandera, but most of these insecure places, and the national government. And on the back of what both of you have then spoken about, how would your proposals then affect the budget, should you be uh, voted into office after the election next week? And let me talk about the, the budget for the financial year 2021-2022. The big winners there were healthcare, water, environment, public works. Took quite a big chunk of the budget. Uh, but some of the losing sectors included the Ministry of Gender, Youth, and Social Services, the Ministry of Trade and Investments as well, which on average got about 1% of the budget. With the awareness of the challenges that this county faces from insecurity to then some of the proposals you've put for the education sector as well, what would you do differently from a budgeting perspective? I want to hear your thinking around this. And Noor Ali, let me start with you on this one. Um, I have to, if the budget is being prepared, we have got the comfort of time to go and redo it by ourselves. We can't, we'll sit with the new, uh, new assembly that are going to come in to make sure that we prioritize depending on, on, on the need that is in place. For example, now if you put health care and then you forget the youth, and these are the backbone of this, this county, then you've, you have not done the right thing. And that is why the, all the problem you are saying, that the, if youth are not committed, then what are you running in the county? So when you are saying health sector, and you say that the budget has been given to the health sector and drugs are not in the hospital, and then you see that the huge budget they are getting, you are not getting it. And the procurement is not done at the sub-county level. It's being done at the, at the governor's office. So what I'm trying to say is that if, if that, that, that is the budget. That's a very strong uh, allegation. You have proof of that? Have you reported that anywhere? Yeah, because whatever has been, whatever has been done, the county assembly, the budget has been done in the county, the county and then it has been approved at the county. Mm -hmm. What I'm trying to say is that if, for example, you are, you are procuring a drug for, for Ministry of, uh, of, I mean, for Department of Health, and Banisa is a sub-county, and you don't, you don't do the drug, I mean, you don't, you don't, you don't take the service to the community. There's supposed to be the procurement team of, of that particular Banisa sub-county are the ones who are supposed to, uh, are the ones who are supposed to be uh, uh, procuring for the drug, rather than being done here at Mandera Town. And then the contract is given even to the local people, because the local people will know that is the continuity of the drug to the, to the, to the hospital, so that at some point there will be no, no, no drug will not be out of the stock. So what I'm saying is that mm -hmm. the budget, we are going to revisit it, 
and, and prioritize it so that every sector can get uh, what it takes to run the, the different departments. Okay, and your time is up. Let me allow um, Aidan Mohammed to also weigh in on this. What would be your budget priorities looking at that financial year that we are coming out of with some of the proposals you're putting on the table? I, I think, Wahiga, one of the reasons why I have opted to run for this office is to deal with some of the problems that we have. I have never seen such an incompetent administration uh, who I think at best I will describe as incompetent but at worst as people who are trying to do cover-ups and get engagements in corruption cases, many of which are uh, easily available. And just a good example is this current administration of this county, the last action they did was to reallocate the budget for 2022-2023 to ongoing projects, most of which are subjects of corruption cases, so that they continue that way, that any administration that comes after will not have any new programs or initiatives uh, to undertake. I think that is their wish, but it's not going to happen that way. But that is akin to people who are setting on fire a house that they are vacating. Okay, and, and I'll not allow you to talk too much about other administrations. I want to hear about yours. What would your Well, be? so the priorities that we have would be influenced largely by the needs of the people. And the number one program that really affects the lifestyle of people is to look at what is the economic mainstay of people in Mandera County. And that is livestock and livestock-related industries this chain that actually relates to livestock. Over 90% of people here depend on livestock. My fees were paid using uh, you know, proceeds from sale of livestock. And it's a form of wealth, it's a form of savings. And we need to protect and preserve that. So in that supply chain, whether it's water that is required for livestock or the livestock itself, the production extension services, markets for it, that would be a key priority areas that you did not mention as one of the top few gainers, as, as you, you say. Mm -hmm. There are issues that we really want to focus on about creating wealth for people in this county. Poverty is a main problem, and it's because of unemployment. It's a significant disincentive for people to go to school. So we are creating a youth and women empowerment fund that over five years is going to be 2.5 billion shillings which is a revolving fund that would be interest-free, that would be enabling young men and women to actually create opportunities for SMEs uh, in this place. Yesterday I was talking to border border young men who are riding bikes that belong to some wealthy people. And one of the beneficiaries I'm sure that will come out of that program would be those people who would own those motorbikes. And look at it, uh, Wahiga. It costs about 120,000 shillings to buy a motorbike. Mm -hmm. If you advance 120 your, for your somebody... Your time is up, but 10 seconds to finish. If you give 120,000 to advance mm -hmm. and you get 1,000 shillings a day, you will own that motorbike in three months. Okay. Those are the kind of opportunities that we want to bring to our people here. Okay. Be before you respond, let's take a break. I'll come back and I'll give you a chance to, to also weigh in on this. We'll also get a few questions from some of the members uh, of uh, this uh, community that are joining us here today in Mandera. You're watching Citizen Debate. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Round of applause.